It's time. It's time for me to show you how to take your PlayStation 5 controller and turn it into something cool. So the theme for this controller, as asked per you guys in a poll I put up, Cyberpunk 2077 with a little something extra. I'm going to show you a Dawn dish soap technique that I learned. The poll was neck and neck, 50-50. You guys wanted Cyberpunk and you wanted this, so you got them both. Thank you so much for checking out the video. This is a different kind. I mean, they all are most of the time, but what do I mean by that exactly? Well, this tutorial is specifically and only for the Patreon community. I am so blessed that even if you were just giving me $1, I thank you, gosh, man, just good God. Thank you so much. Um, all of my tutorials from here on out are gonna be for Patreons only. That's it from here on out. Um, it's just the way I want to do it because you guys are giving to me and I want to give back and I want to do it in such a way that um, everybody's happy. Not only that, but you'll get a chance to win this controller um, if you're a Patreon member. I will be giving this controller away and uh, of course with all of my tutorials I'm going to be showing you some new techniques, some things that I've learned recently, some things I always try to find something new to show you guys. So here we go. Let's check out at what we're going to need to make this controller. Simple tools, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to need to get yourself an X-Acto knife with a brand new, very sharp blade. Get yourself a small paintbrush. Uh, I have the iFixit case here, the iFixit set. Uh, it's great for tearing down uh, electronics with but you could get like a size one or size zero Phillips head screwdriver. You're also gonna need some water slide decal paper. Make sure that it is clear water slide decal paper. And we're gonna use some micro set and micro saw along with that water slide decal paper. Get yourself some blue painters tape and whatever color paint you guys wanna use. I'm using Rust-Oleum for this um, because people were asking, is it possible for me able to do something without sanding? Yes, you can do it with Rust-Oleum. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do that because it's definitely something that a lot of people have been asking about. So one thing I didn't show you in the teardown tutorial uh, was that you need to remove the uh, R triggers and the L triggers. And you do that with these screws here on the front here of the, uh, um, the chassis that holds the inside of the of the controller together. It's just these two, these four screws, you got two on each side. You'll just unscrew those and the whole mechanism uh, of the triggers will completely come out. Next, we're gonna remove the joysticks. It's just as simple as ever. You just grab them and pull them right off. Nothing special there. Now, before I get started adding primer, what I'm going to do is make sure that the ribbon cable here on the touchpad is secure and covered over with blue painter's tape so that way it doesn't get any primer or paint or clear coat on it. So we're going to cover that up. And then after I'm done with that, I'm going to cover up the, um, the, the mechanism or the, the innards of the triggers here. And I only want the plastic piece of the triggers to show. So make sure that when we're doing this, we're covering up all of the mechanics inside of the triggers and only allowing those plastic pieces to show. Did I mention how much I love you? It is great to be back doing a tutorial like this. It feels like it's been too long. I mean, we're halfway, a little over halfway through 2021. Can you believe it? 2020 was something terrible. A lot of people thought I would have been able to do something like this pretty much every month last year, but I was still busy. COVID didn't 
um, affect me in that way because I was working for a pharmacy. So I did get to keep working. Enough about that, though. We don't want to think about those things. Alright, so when we're doing our primer, yes, when we're not sanding, as with any project, we want to make sure that we are putting our primer down. And you don't have to put a lot down on your project. Just light sweeps over it, and I am allowing you to hear the, the sound of my paint can so you can get a better feel of how much I'm using. Very light. Uh, just a light coating over the whole thing. You don't want it completely colored. You know, no heavy primer job here. That's a bad idea. It could flake off, then your whole paint job gets ruined. So just ever so lightly dust your project with the primer. One thing I really like to do is get myself a big ass cup of hot water and drop my paint in there. That really helps the paint flow out of the can much nicer. Uh, off to the side, we're gonna spray a little bit, make sure that that nozzle is nice and clear, and then we're going to apply our first coat of paint. Again, I am allowing you to hear the paint coming out of the can just to give you a better idea of how it feels when it's coming out of there. Uh, very light coat. Uh, almost like what we did with our primer. A little bit more coverage than that, but not much. You just want to put a very light coating on there. Hardly anything at all. And then we're going to allow this paint to dry about 15 minutes before we put on our second coat. Second coat, again, making sure our paint is nice and shook. Off to the side, I'm going to spray a couple of times just to make sure the nozzle is clear. And then I'm going to lay a heavier coat on the second coat. Um, the first coat, we're gonna stay back about 14 inches away from the, from the project. Second coat, we're getting a little bit closer, about 12 to 10 inches away. And we're putting on gracefully and lightly coating it. We want it to look barely wet this time around. We're gonna let that dry for 15 minutes and then move on to our third coat here. Now this is the coat that we're gonna apply a little heavier. Um, it is going to look wet when it is done. Notice I said a little heavier and also that it's going to look wet. I say that because I'm trying to carefully describe to you, you know, you, since you're putting a third coat on here, you can see that the coats build up together and it creates the final product of our paint job. We don't need to cake it on there. Uh, and also with this, you'll notice that my sprays are tighter. They're closer to the project even more, six to eight inches away from the project. And I'm moving around all angles of the project, making sure that I have covered every last bit of it and that the final stage of it looks like it's wet. It's glossy and it's evenly coated. It's not pouring off of there. You don't have big heavy drips. Again, three coats, you know, with 15 minutes of dry time between each coat, this allows us to have a nice, even coat of paint on our project.
Now we're gonna let that dry overnight. And we're moving on to our first coat. You can set that project off to the side. And now we're moving on to the first coat of our buttons. Again, very, very light coat. One thing that I wanna to mention to you is the PlayStation button is very lightweight. So we're making sure to keep back a good 14 inches away because you can see right there, it moved with even me being a good distance away. We don't want to blow it off the table and get a bunch of crud on it, you know, uh, and then get pissed off at ourselves and it's just no good. After letting it dry for 15 minutes, we're moving on to the second coat, applying it a little heavier still maintaining a good distance away from our project. Let it dry for 15 minutes and then move on to your third coat. With the buttons, I am still maintaining a good 14 inches away from the project the entire time. I'm not moving up any closer to it. Again, I am just taking my time here, paying close attention, looking at it from all angles and making sure that the final coat is a nice, even coat. Now I'm gonna do some stripes on uh, this faceplate here. And this is going to be the undercoat of the Dawn dish soap technique, which I'm excited to show you guys. Uh, super easy project, super easy technique to do. Um, I'm putting even amounts of blue and white all around this project. Again, those are just the colors that I'm using. Feel free to use whatever colors you wanna use. And you can do this on the main project itself. You don't have to do it on the faceplate. I just chose to do it there because I just wanted to get uh, the best of both worlds. That, that poll that I had put up uh, asking, you know, what did you guys want to see? Did you want to see a Cyberpunk 2077 controller? Or did you want to see the Dawn dish soap technique? Um, I got, it was basically 50-50. So I wanted to include both of those in one video. And it's, you know, I think I might do that a lot more often when it comes to doing projects. I'm just going to ask the community what they would like to see and then, you know, base the project, base the decision on what you guys are, are telling me you want. So super fun stuff about to happen here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some Dawn dish soap for this and we're gonna use some flat paint. Flat paint dries faster than glossy paint. Now I've been using a glossy paint for this. This is a pretty easy thing to do. What we wanna do is we wanna make a light drizzle. Now, typically you wouldn't use a nozzle like that. You want like the regular 
nozzle. So it doesn't matter that this is, you know, Dawn Ultra Platinum. This is just what I happen to have right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of practice uh, drips over here, just like this. See, what we don't want is big blobs like that. We want it to be streams. You know what I'm saying? And we don't want it to blobby, blobby out all over the place. We just want streams, nice little streams like that. All right. So here we go. I'm like kind of like shaking the, kind of like doing like this kind of motion with it. Let me get this out of the way over here. So I'm just kind of like going like this. Okay, so doing it again. All over this thing. Okay. Ooh, that's a big blob. That's a big blob. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm gonna go wash this off. So part of one of the things I like to do about when I'm making these videos for you guys is even when I mess up, I try to include that in the video because, you know, things aren't always perfect. Um, sometimes you run into these things where stuff didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. So, uh, not afraid to let you know when I screwed up something. And be sure that, you know, like you just saw me there, if you do happen to mess up, go ahead and, you know, wipe, wipe it off and then dry it off. Make sure to dry it off again. Starting all over again. Again, I'm gonna get some practice swings in here. Okay, all right. Just trying to lightly drizzle it on there. Different, different angles. Don't want a whole lot on there. Now a little, little drippy drips, an occasional like manageable blob is okay. Okay. All right. Wouldn't mind one on each of these ends over here, if it's possible. Without screwing stuff up. that drip a little bit there this is such a small surface and I can see I've got way more on one side of it than the other there and I don't like it so I'm gonna do this piece again until I get it right um, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this here. So, make sure your can is nice and shook. Give it a couple of, couple of squirts there off the bat there. All right, now here we go. And, making sure to make it completely black again. All right, now, that's gonna dry, and it's gonna dry relatively quickly. When it dries, which should be about 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna run that under the water. But for now, I'm gonna get this piece here the way I want it. Water going here, just a little warm water. This is off. Oh, that's 
like revealing things I didn't even know was there. Yeah, that looks dope. Trying to make sure that all that black comes off. Touching it just to see if I can give it a little assistance. Yeah, look at that. Huh? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Graphics. So we're using our water slide decal paper for this. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to get on Google and and show you the process of looking up, you know, graphics to put on your, your project. That's all up to you. It's really easy to do. You just use Google Images and, and put in keywords. The keywords that I used for this were motherboard vector. And this is what came up or one of the pictures that came up. And uh, on my dry project, remember, I've let this project dry for 24 hours at least. Um, I'm, I'm taking the, the decals, the water slide decal paper, and, and basically just kind of looking at it and deciding what is going to look the best on the controller. And then we want to make sure to try and get as much of the white off of the, uh, the stencil, or the, I'm sorry, the, the decal as we possibly can. So now I'm going to drop this into some water and now we're going to move on to our micro set and micro saw. We want to use the blue one first. Micro set sets it in place. Now what is this for exactly? This is a setting solution for your water slide decals and it really helps the water slide decal look like it's been painted on. And I wish I would have known about this stuff so long ago. There have been so many projects that, I mean, all of the projects that I've just used water slide decal paper on alone have all turned out looking really good. But anything that can make it look that much better, I mean, that just, that a little bit more detail really goes a long way. So we put our micro set down first, and then we add our water slide decal, and then we're gonna use the micro set on it um, getting the creases and bumps out of it. So this stuff softens the decal. So we really need to be careful um, about moving the decal around after we've been putting the micro set on. After the micro set is on, you really don't want to move it anymore. You, you won't be able to, you'll risk tearing. I did experience that and you can see even now you can kind of see in places where some of the ink of the decal has come off. Um, I'm not sure why that happened. I made sure to uh, clear coat the water slide decal paper before I did any of this and still I had that issue but uh, nothing is perfect and I went ahead and just continued on with the project. Now, as you can see, we're using the red. It's the second step in the whole process. This is the micro saw, and this stuff really, really softens that, um, that decal paper, and it helps it adhere to uh, irregular surfaces much, much better. So that's the whole purpose of this, and especially when it comes to a controller, there's lots of curves and stuff like that. So that's why we're using it, and Moving on to the next decal, again, I want to mention here, not again, I guess it's the first time I'm mentioning it, but I do want to mention here that I am allowing that stuff to dry for a bit and then, and you know, moving on to the next decal. So I'm constantly getting progress done. Uh, that project is off to the side and drying, and now I'm just moving on to another part of the project and keeping the momentum of the project going. 
So it's really best when you're laying down your, your decal to get it where you want it to be before you get that micro set uh, applied on it again. Then we're gonna hit it with the uh, micro saw. So set first, saw second, blue first, red second. And we're gonna do this about four or five times. So I'm gonna let you watch me here. I'm putting on decals and again, letting the decal that I just put on get a little dryness to it. After it's dried up a little bit, I'll go over it again with more micro saw and I will continue that process about four or five times. So I wanted to take some time and mention on this particular decal right here in this area here towards this angle of the of the grip, you can see that it did not want to cooperate. And this is a perfect example of what micro saw and micro set do for you. They allow the decal to really uh, contour, you know, conform to those contours of the of the controller of the the irregular surface. By the end of the whole process, you will really be able to see that the, the micro set and the micro saw really, really solve that problem. It really helps quite a bit. You can also see in this part of the video, all these creases over here on this side of the controller here where I'm brushing right now, you can really see those diminish. Now, part of it is me working out the crease, working out the air that's under there, but a lot of it is, is through the help of the micro set and the micro saw. It's just, again, I really wish I would have known about this stuff before. Um, you'll also notice from time to time that you're seeing me pat it dry with a paper towel just once before moving on to the micro saw. So during this part, we're actually going to see those creases get even, uh, even softer and completely diminish away. Now, as I turn this around, if you look uh, just above where the D-pad is, you can see some sort of strange um, imperfection there. And what I think happened is, I believe, without me realizing it, the decal folded there. It's the only thing I can think of, um, because the other side turned out looking great. That is unfortunate, but stuff like that does happen.
I've let this dry completely overnight. So this is 24 hours later and I'm going through the openings here where the film is that would be covering things like the D-pad and the, and the buttons on the other side. I am outlining uh, that, I'm cutting it away very gently. That's one of the reasons why I said make sure you have a brand new sharp blade because they just cut through this stuff like butter. You really want to be careful uh, not to hack up your paint job doing this. You don't have to push hard, you can just twist it around in there and it'll make this film, uh, it'll just, just comes right off because the film's already super soft. It's just, it's probably one of the most satisfying parts of the process. All right, for clear coating, same rules that we used for our paint job. First coat, very light. Second coat, a little bit heavier, barely wet looking. And then the third coat, we want that to look the wettest. Again, allowing you to hear what it sounds like coming out of the can and the entire process. I'm not speeding anything up. I want you all to be able to see everything as it's done. Now one of the things I want to show you here is exactly what it all looks like with a wet coat, uh, final coat, third coat, and just show you up close how it looks kind of glossy and how it looks wet. Comes across really well with this camera. You can really see the gloss here. 
That might look like a lot, um, but it is just perfectly enough. Once you get to that point, you, you have to understand you stop spraying. You can really see in those uh, trigger areas how that just perfectly laid down uh, with the water slide decal there. It really does look like it's been painted on to the project. Now we're going to put this thing back together, starting with the R2 and L2 trigger buttons. Now we're gonna put our D-pad and our buttons in, our square, circle, triangle, and X buttons. Making sure to put our silicone button pads back into place. Right where they go, they have these little pegs on them here, and the holes fit straight onto those pegs, making perfect alignment. So before we put our buttons back into place, we want to put this silicone pad back down and we want this arrow symbol here to be pointing upwards towards the button here that we got at the top, the triangle button. Now we'll put our buttons back in. They have specific grooves that they fit into. That way they maintain their position in the controller and also it makes them unique to their own holes. Again, placing the silicone button pad back into place, same principle. There are little pegs that the holes go over. Now I'll put the PlayStation button back into position and then put the button pad back over it. Then we'll put the home and uh, search buttons back into place. I'm not sure what those buttons are exactly. Um, I don't own a PlayStation 5, so whatever all those buttons do, we'll put those back into position now. And then we put the light bar frame back into position here. This is a bit tricky. Sometimes it feels like it doesn't want to go into place. Make sure that you know you're clearing any posts and uh, once it goes into position it'll kind of snap down now we're going to reassemble the touchpad make sure that the blue ribbon cable here is underneath of this plastic bar here we're going to have to keep an eye on that quite a bit it is definitely a pain in the ass the rest of the way through the uh, the rebuild we put the black, um, whatever this thing is, spacer uh, into position here, making sure that the blue ribbon cable is going through that hole. And then we will screw it back together to the actual touchpad unit. Uh, and then once we uh, get done putting those screws into place, we're gonna kind of make sure to snap it together uh, onto the, the light bar that goes around it. Now we put the microphone into position here. This also uh, can be quite tedious. You have to feed this through this little hole here and work it upwards. And I'm showing you all of it. I'm showing you all of the difficulty in, in its all of its glory. That circular part of the microphone outward once we actually lock that into position. But right now we're just getting the ribbon cable back uh, just into the controller.
So now we're gonna put the joysticks back into position here. These have specific uh, shaped grooves for the posts to go onto. And we're gonna feed this ribbon cable through the hole up through the top of this. It is by far the most tedious process of putting the controller back together is making sure that that ribbon cable is feeding all the way through all of these layers just so we can make sure that it connects to the you know the actual motherboard of the controller the pcb of the controller and then we're going to tighten these screws down um, if you completely remove them Obviously, you want to put those screws back in here and then you know, make sure everything is uh, got enough slack on it and then just drop this back into position, making sure that that ribbon cable, <laughs> you got to make sure these ribbon cables are over the top. Like I said, over all these layers, it's, it's manageable, but it's just one of those things that hung me up quite a bit. Make sure that that is all the way down flat. Otherwise, that screw won't go into place. And now we will reconnect our ribbon cables all over this controller. Starting here with the microphone that's set to the bottom. You just push it into the slot. Now, there's a little hole and groove sort of set up here in the controller and that microphone won't sit into place unless you uh, have that sitting up there tightly. So I went ahead and just used my screwdriver here to lightly pull it back into position. And you can see that piece of plastic is perfectly through that hole there. Now these ribbon cables have these little tabs, which make it a little bit easier for you to uh, push them down into their slots. Sometimes you might need them, sometimes you may not. This is an example where I didn't need it there but right here, I'm gonna reposition the light so you can see the slot a little better. And then you can see how I'm using the tabs on these ribbon cables to put this back down into the hole. And then we'll put our uh, battery cradle back into position here. Then we're going to put down the top microphone, which is a much shorter ribbon cable and just goes right into position right on top of the, uh, basically the cradle of the battery and that bottom piece kind of hold that into position. And again, you want that circular part of the microphone going upward. So we put our battery back in and now we have to close the controller back up, starting with the top of it here where the R2 and L2 buttons are. That snaps down into position there, and then you will squeeze the controller all the way around, working it completely together until the plastic completely co closes around itself. Now make sure that your buttons are working. This is like the perfect time to do that and nothing is resisting you. Once you've confirmed that is the case, you can then put your screws back into position here underneath where the L1 and R1 buttons go.
now we're going to put the screws down here at the bottom and then you could also go ahead and put your l1 and r1 buttons back into position they just pop in uh, right down into the little slots that are meant for them to go in very easily um, if you find out that they're kind of hung up and they're not moving pull them back out and make sure that the slots um, are not covered with paint we then put our face plate back into place making sure that those little tabs at the top fit underneath of there uh, just where they're supposed to go and they're not breaking when we put them back in and then you snap it all back down into place there it is guys the final product so happy to have been able to make this for you and this is ready to go to one lucky patreon one of you guys out there is going to win this um this is to the five dollar tier patreons i really appreciate you guys and i wanted to be able to you know give this away to somebody who appreciates it and appreciates the work that went into it and yeah i just really wanted to show a way to to give back to everybody and you know i've done giveaways in the past and a lot of times it's turned out that the people that i was giving stuff away to were just simply there for the giveaway and um i can't do that you know i i don't want it to go to the wrong person i want it to go to somebody who actually you know is a subscriber to the channel and a supporter so i really do appreciate everybody so very much um can't thank you guys enough. It's been a wonderful ride doing this YouTube thing for everybody. I really hope the tutorial helped you figure out some ideas for yourself and some projects that you wanted to do. Feel free to completely replicate this if you'd like. Whatever project it is you're doing, I wish you the best of luck. And feel free to share that with me on my Facebook page. So happy to like see what everybody's putting together. I've seen a lot of really cool submissions, just people saying, hey, you know, I put this together, your video helped me, and, and seeing everybody's own unique ideas come to life, it's really just one of the biggest blessings ever, and I can't thank you guys enough. Another thing I wanted to mention is if you are a streamer, feel free to check out our Stream Songs playlist on Spotify. There's a link in the description below. And yeah, free music for you. Uh, just a, another way to give back to the community and anybody else who happens to need um, royalty free music because I'm a musician and I appreciate good music and I want good music out there for people who need it thank you all so much once again and I'll see you in the next video